If you haven't done so yet, just make sure that you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. In order to solve this question, it's going to be useful to remind ourselves a certain equation that gives us the electrical potential energy of an electric dipole that's placed in an electric field. Kind of a mouthful, but here is that equation. The letter U represents the potential energy of the dipole in the electric field. P is the electric dipole itself. And then E is the electric field. So that's one idea that we're going to need. We also notice that this equation is expressed as a dot product. And we remember that when you have a dot product, you can actually re-express the dot product as follows. You would keep the negative sign that's in front of the expression. Then, for the dipole, you would simply put the magnitude of the dipole. Now by magnitude, we can drop this little vector notation. So we would just use the letter P for the magnitude of the electric dipole. And then for the electric field, again, we would just put in the magnitude of the electric field. And then we would mul multiply by the cosine of the angle between these two vectors right here, between the electric dipole and the electric field. So this is a very important equation that we're going to be needing. Another idea is as follows. Whenever you're trying to calculate how much work that an external agent does in performing some kind of an action, then you can rely upon the following idea. The work that is done by that external agent is equal to the final potential energy of the object, in this case the electric dipole, minus the initial potential energy of that same object. And so what we're going to do is for the final potential energy, we're going to be plugging in this expression, except we'll be putting a little subscript of F on the angle to indicate the final value of the angle. Note that the dipole and the electric field are not changing their magnitudes in this case. And then for the initial electric potential energy, we will put a little subscript zero here to represent the initial angle. So it's going to look like the following. We have the work done by some external agent equals negative P times E times the cosine of the final angle minus and then we'll put a parenthesis here because the expression itself includes a negative sign, recall. So we would have negative PE and then the cosine of the initial angle. Now we could simplify this expression a little bit before we plug in the known values. We have this double negative right here. So of course that's going to create a positive. So we'll just change that sign accordingly. And then it's probably useful, although it's not necessary, to factor out any constant values. Now, as noted, both the electric dipole P and the electric field E are constants. So we can actually factor those out into the front of an expression here. So we'll have P E on the outside. And then what's left over, so to speak, is negative cosine of the final angle plus cosine of the initial angle. Notice we kept that negative sign that was part of the leading term there. We can now begin to plug in some known values here. The question gave us the magnitude of P, the electric dipole. That was 2.58 times 10 to the negative 25 coulomb meters. 2.58 times 10 to the negative 25 coulomb meters, multiplied by the magnitude of the electric field, which was given as 35.6 newtons per coulomb. And then we're going to multiply this by negative cosine of the final angle. We've got to be a little bit careful here. The initial angle is 33.4 degrees. 
So that's relatively straightforward. And then we are turning this electric dipole 180 degrees. So we're basically going to have to add 180 degrees onto this initial angle in order to get the final angle. So it would be 33.4 degrees plus 180 degrees. And we might as well simplify that now. And that should give us 213.4 degrees. So that would be our final angle uh, that we'll be plugging into the equation down below. And then the initial angle is 33.4 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug those in down here. And I'm going to have to move this over. And then we pick up our calculator and heroically type in this entire expression. And we'll see what we get. Looks like we end up with about 1.53 times 10 to the negative 23. And then work we saw was a change in potential energies. And so this would come out in terms of joules. And this would give us the final answer.